Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and in this video we're going to continue our playthrough of Scythe. And there's just a couple things I want to clean up before we begin this particular part of the playthrough. Nothing too major, although the first one is kind of major. I made a pretty big mistake in the way that I moved my character at the 13 mark, I believe it was, in the prior video. Now I had my character move from here to here, and I did so thinking because when I had upgraded my mech, which I chose Seedworthy that I could do that. What I was thinking in my brain at the time though was something totally different. My actual plan that I'm going to do instead now is instead of going across this uh, water right here, which I can't do because as you can see I'm moving from a uh, wooded hex here to a uh, village, I can't make this movement unless and even with this ability Riverwalk taken, I still couldn't have taken that movement because in either case, both of the water-based abilities for my character as well as my mech can only do these two types of things, which is I can move across rivers to forests and mountains, or I can just move to lakes and off of lakes. So I couldn't have moved from this particular forest into this village. It's just not possible. It's not one of the things that my faction could have done either way I'd gone about it. So I'm gonna keep the seaworthy upgrade because that's the one that I chose. However, uh, knowing that I couldn't have actually moved my character here and the main reason I moved it here was to do an encounter, instead I'm going to move him from this space to this space, which is fine because it also has an encounter token and we'll resolve it the same way we did in the prior game except the resolved food that came from that encounter will land here instead and this token will be available right here. So that fixes that mistake up so that because I couldn't have crossed that particular spot right there and now everything's all squared away. This food came from the encounter. We're all set up perfectly. So at this point, that's the very first and probably the biggest one that I wanted to correct before we started. And then I have two more really minor ones I wanna do right now. The second thing that I wanna correct is a worker placement error. This is the first time this has happened during the playthrough, so I kind of feel bad about it, but I'm glad someone caught it. It was actually a really silly error on my part. It was when we put this worker right here, and it was actually near the end of the video anyway. It was around the 29 minute mark, so it's okay. This is something that we can change right now and it won't impact gameplay, but basically when I was moving a worker from my home base, I thought that this would be the available space for it to land, and a leg space is available, as which is a little bit abnormal for when you're playing with actual human control players, but the Automa can use lakes and control them. Um, but essentially, once of course, they actually are past the particular uh, uh, river walk ability, which is the four, or which is all the ways with the crosses through them. But regardless, this individual wouldn't have gone here, this worker wouldn't have gone here, it actually would have gone where my character is. And for some silly reason, when I was going ahead and figuring out where I should put it, I was counting everything around all of my Automa workers. And I forgot that the character, uh, when it's in a hex, does not stop a worker from being placed there. And as you can easily see, three adjacent hex for a total of three, plus the character that's already in here for four, makes this the obvious choice as to where it should have moved. So now everything is corrected in terms of the placement of that worker. The last thing that I forgot to do, which is quite minor again, but something that's worth mentioning, is when the white faction landed on this particular star right here, we were supposed to not only rotate the deck, which I did, but then shuffle all the discarded cards back into this particular deck. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to leave uh, one of the discarded cards out of the pile and shuffle all the other cards back in in order to correct that one. That one's much more minor, but it is worth mentioning that whenever you hit the uh, when you go to the advanced mode of the Automa, basically or the Roman numeral two, by flipping the card over, you're not just flipping it or rotating the deck, you're also merging your discarded pile back into your deck again. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna correct that off camera, and then that's gonna conclude all of the uh, small minor errors, except for this one, which was actually kind of large, but we were luckily able to correct it quickly. And we're gonna move on with the playthrough and see what happens. I'm really excited because I think some crazy stuff is gonna go down in this episode. Episode. All right, so it's coming around to my turn to start off this particular episode and I'm really happy for that because I really want to get ready for what likely will be a war. Uh, this mech, the white mech here, is getting dangerously close to an area with a majority of my workers along with resources and another mech. Plus the fact that uh, I have a character here and my character is only two spaces now away from the factory. One thing that's really cool about choosing the Seaworthy ability is you can see here it says move to and from lakes 
and retreat onto adjacent lakes. So basically I'm able with my character or mechs now to move onto a lake space and I can also move to the factory from here. So that's a really cool ability because I'm gonna be able to get to the factory really quick. Now the thing is though, if I was to use movement right now, as you can see the last time I used an action, it sat on top of the produce action. If I was to go ahead and do a move action right now, then the downside of this is my movement would only be would be three different units moving one space each, which means a character at max could just get to here, which doesn't really get me to the factory anyway. So really it would take me two turns to get to the factory. So I might as well do something that's actually going to help me defensively in case the white faction happens to get a card that's going to start a war over here. Um, so I really wanna to try to bolster my power back up to and hopefully past where the white faction is in the power track in case we have to do combat with him. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but it might. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose for our action to do this one right here, which is the bolster action. We're gonna pay a coin for our supply. So we have uh, currently with 10, we're going down to nine. We're gonna go ahead and gain three power on the track. So it's gonna jump us from four to seven, which gives us a one point advantage going into any type of attack that may happen, or even if we try to initiate the attack on the next turn or future turn. That advantage is really handy. Going down to the bottom, even better, we can do the bottom action as well because we do have two steel sitting in here. So I'm gonna take the two steel out of here and I'm going to put them aside like this and we now get to unlock another mech. And on top of unlocking another mech, we gain three coins. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually take, uh, let's see here, let's take away two coins and I'm gonna give myself a five coin. So now we have, actually, we'll just give ourselves a 10 coin and get rid of my other five. So there we go. So now we got 12 coins in our reserve now, which is great. We're getting, making some decent money. And uh, we also get a mech. So we have to decide what mech we want. And really, it, it does come down to what ability we want as well. So river walk, as we talked about before, would allow us to, uh, my character and my mech, as you can see, they... They tie up to the symbols of my character and mech there. Allow them to move across rivers to forests and mountains, something that they can't do right now. The only spots that I can cross rivers at right now or are across lakes, which uh, just happens to be heading towards the factory. That's the only one that I can really do right now. So doing river walk would open up the ability to be a little bit more free with my movement. Um, the other thing to think about is that my mech is over here and is still able to get on land all the way around through here. So I don't necessarily need to get river walk now that my uh, now that I have the ability to cross lakes, uh, but um, I don't know. That's the debate. The other thing that's really cool is that if I get artillery, I can actually hurt the opponent by two power. Um, basically, if I go in, so before combat, if you pay uh, if you pay one power, the opponent gets minus two power. So that's interesting. So you're just kind of knocking each other down. But this one's the one I really like. It's speed. It's going to start to increase how fast I can move around. This one's a one hex per movement, a, a bonus. So basically when I do my move action later, which I'm hoping to do, I'm going to be able to move three units, two spaces each. And that's way more useful for the fact that I really want to get my character to the factory first. So we're going to take the speed bonus, but I do get a new mech, of course, and I have to decide where I want to put it. This is where things get fun because there's two spots. I can either put it in this area with the workers here with my, um, with my uh, character, but that would be silly because as of right now, oh no, that actually wouldn't be too bad. I guess if I did that, the positive with that one would be that I can still move across lakes right now because I have Seaworthy with the mech. And that actually might be a wise choice based on the fact that what's likely gonna happen at the factory is going to be some combat with the yellow and the white faction at some point. And of course, the bonus is if I have multiple mechs or, and characters in the same space, then I can use a power card for every one of them that's in there. So as of right now, I could use two power cards in a battle. And thankfully now I'm much more prepared. I have three power cards so I could really boost myself up um, and do somewhat okay maybe in a battle. Uh, the tough spot is to say whether or not he should be here or he should be here because what I'm worried about is potentially... Um, I, I, I am worried about this mech. I really am worried about this mech being here. I don't like the fact the mech is there um, and it is kind of sitting very close on one of my future moves I could deal with it. I could Maybe my next turn will be to take this mech and move into here. If I do that and lose, 
I have a wide open space of resources and stuff that will just get absolutely hammered, which is not good. Um, but I think, I think I'd be able to handle it. I think I would be able to win that fight, being that I have an attack card. And uh, guys, I'm just kind of strategizing in my head here, but just so you guys are reminded here, my strategy, or my cards, sorry, my I have a four, and I'd probably be using that four uh, if I tried to trigger an attack way later. Plus I have an extra there. So I might not need two mechs in that location. It's so tough. And I could also try to produce again to build out the mech later. So let's do that. Let's leave it like this for now and hope that this pans out because this is scary. Okay, so we're gonna go with that uh, and we're gonna see how this pans out. So I've now uh, put my mech down, got my coins. So everything about my action is now complete. I paid, I got my three bolster, I paid my two uh, steel in order to build a mech, got my coins, got my mech, deployed it. We're all set and now we're gonna move on to the yellow faction. Okay, let's see what kind of pain the yellow faction is gonna dole out us. Uh, encounter, that's bad. It's a faction. Oh no, it's the encounter faction. That is not good. So they're going to be uh, going ahead with that. It's called the encounter factory uh, action. Sorry, I think I said faction by accident. Uh, but basically we're selecting the automatic character in this case. So that's going to be this individual right here. And the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking for uh, hexes that are valid. The first one is in the neighborhood of any Automa unit um, that has the factory. So neighborhood, so that is a valid hex, which is the factory here, uh, or a hex with an encounter token. And there's one right here. So there's an encounter token that's valid as a valid hex, and there is a, a factory that's a valid hex. Uh, so now we're going to pick up the character and we're going to choose the destination hex. First has to be valid. So we've already determined this one and this one are valid. There can't be any enemy units. There isn't. There can't be no autumn mechs. There isn't. And the tiebreaker is closest to the factory. So that is going to have them go to the factory. So that was that. Uh, what's going to happen when they land on a factory is uh, as soon as it lands on a factory, it takes a random factory card if the Automa doesn't already have one. And the Yellow Faction doesn't have one yet. Now they're not going to use them, uh, but it's going to just take one. So we've got four here. I'm just going to grab one from the middle. I have not been able to look through this deck yet, but essentially what it's doing is it's taking that option away from me. I don't even get to know what it is. It's just gone. So this is going to basically be taken away. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually later on off camera maybe slide this thing underneath the yellow faction's mat uh, in order to show that it's there because they can't gain another one. Uh, but that is going to complete that particular part of their Automa card, which is nasty. The next thing they're going to get is they're going to gain stuff. They're going to gain a mech. So a mech is coming out and it's going to land right here. So now they've got two mechs in waiting. So they're bolstering up quite well. I say bolster, but that's probably bad terminology because bolstering is actually an action in this game. But they're basically just getting stronger by putting out these mechs. Um, and the sad thing is there's no enlist bonus. And I was really hoping that we would get uh, to use our enlist bonus to gain some popularity at some point in time, but it still hasn't happened. Uh, the next thing that's going to happen is the star tracker is going to go up. So they're going to move from their position to two. So this is going to give them a star. This is the first time the yellow faction has gained a star. So this star is going to be placed way up here with the white one. So technically all three of us now have a single star. The next thing that's going to happen is we're going to take the card that was just used and we're going to place it off to the side and off camera I'm going to be merging these two decks together to create a new deck shuffled up so we don't know what's going on and we're going to be flipping it to the Roman numeral 2 side which will make this Automa now more dangerous. So both of the Automas have now reached that place on their Star Tracker card that makes things a little bit more nasty for me. So again, off camera, I will shuffle this deck to ensure that uh, everything is completely random. And then we're all squared away, and that is going to conclude the Yellow Faction's turn. We're moving on to the White Faction. On with the White Faction. So this is gonna be the first time we're actually uh, turning over an Automa card that's on the Roman numeral two side of this particular Automa card, so this should be quite nasty. Uh, oh geez, that does look bad. Okay, so, oh wow, so they got one of their faction symbols right out of the gate. So that's the white faction's uh, symbol. So they are going to be doing this action right here, which is the uh, encounter. Oh, oh no, the encounter factory action. It's the exact same thing that just happened over there. Uh, let's see how, how this actually pans out though. So the first thing we do is we select the automatic character. So the white faction's automatic character is down here. Next thing to do is find uh, in the new, so valid hexes, we gotta determine those first. 
so there are any uh, hexes that are in the neighborhood of any Automa unit, okay? It can be the factory, so this could potentially be a fact, uh, a, uh, um, and because there's no, they don't have a factory card yet, this could be a valid hex as well. Uh, another valid hex could be something with an encounter token. So the encounter token that we put back up here um, and stuff like that is a valid hex. So technically two valid hexes in this case. So we're gonna take the character off the game board. Now we're gonna choose the destination hex. Which of the two is it gonna be? The first one is whether it has to be a valid hex first off. So we know this is valid and this one's valid based on the first step. Second, it can have an enemy unit. So essentially that means it can't go to the factory with this particular one. Uh, it can't have an, uh, an Automa mech. So that's okay, because that doesn't matter. Uh, and then after that, it goes into tiebreakers, but we've already figured it out because we can't go to where there's an enemy character uh, based on the, cho the, cho the choose destination hex uh, part of the encounter and factory action. So this character is gonna be going to the encounter token and will be stealing that encounter token off the board. Now you might be wondering why wouldn't this uh, individual go to uh, the factory and when would that happen? There are Automa cards and there are actions that will be attacking a character and you'll see when those particular Automa cards come up uh, they will go after characters and, so and the tiebreakers will be like the factory's priority type thing. So it, it could result in the character going, you know, in the, in the white faction going straight for the factory. Uh, but in this particular case, because it's more of an encounter factory action, it was more so if it was available, they would go there first, but it's already being, uh, it's already owned by yellow. And this is not an attack based Automa action. Uh, it's more of just a steal something action. And the factory's already got us individual there. It's going to go take the encounter token. So it has done that. And we uh, successfully did that particular portion of the card. So we don't need to do the other portion. But you can see below, oh my goodness, three bolster and a worker. The white faction doesn't have any workers left, but they will definitely bolster. So that's going to jump them over me all the way up to nine, which is bad. Because again, these guys can gain a star from going up the track to the top. So again, fighting them is a good thing because it can force them to spend some of their uh, some of their combat and stuff like that. So that's a that's a way to kind of help avoid uh, get, giving them a star uh, is letting them bolster too much. The next thing is the enlistment bonus, which guys, look at that. The enlist is the popularity. And guess what we have over here on mine is the popularity. So this is the first time we can take advantage of a bonus for the enlist. So we go up to two, we're getting a little bit more popular. Uh, we're not exactly the most popular individuals in the game, but we're getting somewhere. Uh, and that's going to go ahead and resolve that particular card. Uh, next, there is a star. So we'll move this on the Star Tracker card to this position. And that's going to do it. That's going to cover the White Faction's move. And it's going to come right back to my turn. So it is my turn now. And I just want to let you guys know the layout of the land and what I'm thinking. So first off, uh, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to do a move action. So I'm going to be moving this over to this uh, action here for sure. The question is, how am I going to move? I can move up to three units, up to two spaces each because I get the plus one additional movement. Um, the fun part is now that extra hex movement is for mechs and characters again but Mexican carry workers so keep that in mind I do have the sea worthy ability which allows me to move on to lake spaces so this is a lake space and this where this mech is is a lake space so I could have my mech move in here to fight I can move my mech over here to fight uh, I cannot have my character get to this location because this character cannot cross um, rivers currently uh, or sorry I shouldn't say cross rivers it can cross th through rivers but it can't cross rivers uh, from, say, a steel um, uh, location or mountain location to a oil location. So I can't do that type of movement. I can only cross rivers at the river uh, rivers themselves, which really caps my way around the map. This character technically and the mech can't even, I can't even go this way to get there. So the, the interesting thing comes down to I, I need to do some fighting. Uh, the scariest situation right now is these two, for sure. If I go after the white twice, 
it would have worked perfectly because we would have had a combat, we both would have paid a bunch of cards, we would have dropped our power down, um, and then we could have fought again a second time, I might have had a good chance. The downside of splitting up two attacks against two different factions is I'm going to run out of cards, uh, they're not going to be as powerful for the second attack, and the other faction will have full power when mine will be drained after the first battle. So it gets very, very sketchy. So the question really comes down to, am I trying to guard this pile of workers and resources over here, or am I trying to gun for the factory? Both of them are very, very useful to me, and it's a really tough decision. So I'm gonna go ahead and do three movements here. The first movement is going to be to take this mech, move him to this lake area here for one. Second is gonna move him to this area here. And that's where he's going to stay. I'm really positioning this mech on purpose to be here so that depending on how this attack ends up going down, I have a mech ready to go in. This mech will only be useful to be able to go after this particular individual because he can move on to lake areas. I cannot cross this river to go to this character. So my plan is to have my mech here go after this guy. So I'm going to have this mech um, move over to this position like so. And we are going to have a combat. Um, the other one that's going to happen is this character is going to move and I'm going to leave my resources there and move my character into this position. So I've basically just entered into all out war uh, and we are going to have to resolve a number of different things here. So this one is an easy movement that doesn't do anything, uh, but basically maybe get the tension of this guy, but there's no combat happening here. Um, so really it comes down to uh, which one do I want to basically do first? Now, technically, I could have done them in the order I want to do combat, because as soon as you move into an end movement, then you kind of initiate combat and stuff. So I'm going to choose here to go ahead and... Whew, this is going to be a tough decision. So the white faction, I need to have someone get taken out there. The other, the other thought that I had was to... Do something a little different here. Actually, you know what? Maybe it's not the right time to go for the factory just yet. What I might do is kind of an all-on offensive against the white faction. And then kind of get geared up to go against the yellow faction. Because I don't think I can win both fights. So I'm going to have my character actually going to go into the white faction's area here. So this will be interesting because i got to resolve a worker kind of situation and stuff like this. But things are getting really... So I'm going to go all out on the white faction because I think there's a couple of you out there that have been cheering on the white faction. I think it's time to give them some grief. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to resolve this one here in the far back, which is our actual combat. Um, this one here is going to be me just dismissing a worker and potentially gaining resources there. So let's do this one right now and then we'll go through them, uh, the rest of them right after that. The first step of combat is to choose our combat power so I have the availability to take up to seven power to this battle and I'm going to do just that because I do not want to lose this battle. This is the one major battle. Uh, I decided against going with my character into this area, which I think would have been just too much for me to handle at once. So I'm going to do one major battle. We're going to do it with the white faction's character and just get it off the board. Um, so what we're going to be doing here is uh, doing all seven of our power. So at some point here, I'm going to have to trip down my power token all the way to zero, which is sad because... Uh, it is what it is. The next thing I can do is for every single mech or uh, character in this area, I get to put one extra combat card in. I get to choose from my hand. I have a two, a four, and a two, so I'm definitely going to use the four because I want to have better odds at uh, taking this thing out. Technically, what you essentially do is, and this happens a lot easier if you're doing this um, two-handed, but basically you just tuck it in behind your uh, dial just like this, and now I've got a total here of 11. So now that I've chosen this, we're going to go ahead and we'll get rid of these ones off the board. I might as well just knock down my power because we know I'm spending all seven. I'll just do that in advance. Let's see if I can get these cards out of here so I can use them later potentially. The next thing we're going to do is draw an Automa card and place it sideways on the combat discard pile. This is going to become different than the regular discard pile. So it is the white faction that's going here. So this is going to be terrifying because I don't know how this is going to pan out. This is going to tell us a lot about what's going on. So I flip this over and we've got ourselves a... Oh wow, that's a really, really, really good one. <laughs> I think I just burnt way too much, way too much power on that attack. They are in the power range of 8 to 13. 
So because they're on the range, they're only going to use one power against me and one combat card. So I think I've got this one in the bag. So this is going to drop them to eight. They're going to take one of their power cards at random. So they've got uh, four of them here. So I'll just take the middle one. I don't actually know what any of these are because I haven't looked and won't look. It's, hopefully it's a big one so that at least they pay some penalty. A three. Eh, it's kind of average, but uh, it's gone. So their total is four. So they lost this easily. So that combat card is going to disappear. So we did it. We actually won. So, I mean, I shouldn't be surprised because we put pretty much everything in there. I don't know if I should have done that, but I did it anyway. So this is going to be discarded. So I'll put this up in the discard pile. Uh, the enemy's combat card, which I've now lost track of. It's here somewhere. I've moved it off camera. Here it is. This will also go into the discard pile as well. Um, so what we're going to do here is resolve everything else that needs to happen next. Uh, first off, we already took the one away for power that's going to be spent here. The card is gone. Um, the enemy did lose. Uh, the enemy is going to gain back a combat card because they played one into the combat. So we're going to give them a new combat card that I don't get to look at. Um, I actually won my first battle, so a star gets placed up here in the, this first battle space. I can do this twice. It's my limit, so I gained a star. Their character is actually removed from the game and back to their character mat. It doesn't go to their home base, it literally gets taken off the board. So the next thing we're going to do on that location is we're going to resolve resources. So what you do with that is you're basically looking at the last discarded card that wasn't a combat discarded card. Now how I'm doing it here is just based on space. What you want to do is have two discard piles. One for your automa discards when it's actually its turn. Combat discards should be in its own pile, but I'm just putting them sideways because that helps me remember which ones were combat and which ones were automa driven. So what it's referring to is it's saying uh, when you're resolving resources, first of all, you're going to look at the actual space you're on. We were fighting on a village location. If you're fighting on a village, you're fighting on a lake, you're fighting on anything that basically won't uh, generate resources for you, then you don't gain any resources, sadly. If we had been fighting on a location, like for instance, which will happen very soon, where my character just is going to kill off this worker here, I'm going to gain or have the potential to gain some wood, which is going to be awesome. But this battle actually didn't give me anything because you can't gain workers as a resource. It comes as an actual action on your faction map. So, we won't see how that works during this particular combat, but now that's been resolved. Uh, everything's been squared away, combat cards have been given, um, and I think we're all good to go. So next up, we're going to resolve this situation right here. Now what happened here was my character came across the river and landed here. In this case, because I walked into an area with an Automa Worker, the Automa Worker automatically loses this battle. It goes back to the home base. I lose a popularity just like I would in a multiplayer game, so I go down to one popularity now. And what's going to happen here now is that I've actually won against the Automa on a particular location that has resources that can be generated. So we're going to go to the last drawn Automa card for them, which is going to be the one under the combat discard. So we'll move this one out of the way for a second. This one right here is the one we're focusing on. We'll take a look at its side right here and it shows three resources so that's how many resources are going to be shown so this is something that's known it's really interesting because that's always known because when you make a combat attack against somebody or and stuff like this and you're moving into a territory you can see uh based on the automa's last drawn discard pile like how many resources could potentially be in that area so it can it can help aid your decision as to should i go in there and take that work out so i saw that there was three wood in there and i was like i'm having a hard time gaining any wood and now i've just gained wood simply by killing off a worker the only downside is my popularity went down but the good thing about uh, wood is that it's going to allow me to potentially build a building at some point which would come from using this action, the trade action on the bottom section. If I have four wood, I can build one of these four buildings, which would, uh, when unlocked, depending on which one I choose, can help me gain. Every time I use an at that action, I'm gonna gain a power. If I use this action, I gain a, a mon, uh, a, sorry, a popularity. If I built the monument, if I built the mine, it gives me transportation uh, throughout portals on the map. So I can jump between the different mines on the map, which is pretty cool. Um, and, uh, and of course, uh, the mill, sorry, over here would, uh, also give me advantage as well. So there's just a bunch of different things that could potentially happen there and wood is, is useful. So, and my main goal was to really just back up this uh, mech and actually keep him kind of cornered in. 
to the point where hopefully he doesn't actually go and try and mess with the workers who are now kind of over there all stranded uh, by themselves. Um, in hindsight, I could have brought all my workers and stuff like that in, but the main reason I didn't, and I probably should have, was just because of the, uh, well, I'm just a little bit scared. Uh, I didn't want to lose the combat and then automatically lose all of them during the combat. So I'd rather keep them to the side and then uh, hope that I'm able to kind of control and, and hopefully that, that they, the mech doesn't get an activation to attack because if it does, it has an opportunity to do some serious damage. I'm uh, hoping I'm in position enough to mess with the factory and mess with the white faction again in, a, in another turn. But the crazy thing too is my power has gone way, way, way down. So we'll take this dial out of the way and that is going to resolve the three movements across the top that I could do. I don't have any oil, so I can't do any upgrading, sadly. Would have been really handy if I had gotten oil instead of wood, but that's what it was. That's the best I can do. That's going to end my turn, and now we're going to move over to the yellow faction. All right, here we go with the yellow faction. I'm getting terrified of the amount of craziness happening in this one. Uh, this is getting really good, though. Okay, so we got a movement of a mech. That can't be good. Uh, this is a non-attacking move mech action, so that's the only good thing. Um, that's what that top one means. So basically, we're going to go ahead and select the Ottoman mech closest to the base. We've got two of them, so it'll be one of them. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and determine valid hexes for the yellow faction. So they have to be in the neighborhood of any uh, Ottoman unit or in the neighborhood of the Ottoman's base. So that's going to kind of be like all the way around all of our characters, uh, literally all the way around them. The only valid hexes that wouldn't make any sense, uh, it can't be this one and it can't be this one. Um, but it can be like this, this, this this, 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 or this. Any of those are valid. Uh, the next thing is we're gonna pick up the selected mech. Um, so first off, no enemy unit can be in there in a valid hex and no Automa, con uh, no Automa combat unit other than the one selected. Um, so we're gonna pick up this mech, which we just did. We're gonna choose a valid hex. We know what our valid hexes are. They're just kind of around the sides of our uh, Automa, Automa characters here and uh, workers. And we're gonna go ahead and find a valid hex, which we have. Then we're gonna find the shortest distance from an from enemy combat unit. So the shortest distance distance to an enemy combat unit would technically be this one right here, which is really bad because that's really close. Um, and uh, the the tiebreaker, well, there's only one that that actually is. So there's no need for a tiebreaker. He's gonna land right here. So as you can see, this central area just got really, really aggressive, really fast. Now this was not a attacking move action. This is called a non-attacking move mech action. So that has been completed. There's also two coins that the Automa is gonna gain. So we're gonna grab two coins for this Automa here. It's gonna bring this guy up to. 15, that's quite a bit, and a new mech is coming out. So we've got another mech. So they are really, really punching out the mechs now. The yellow guys are getting a little bit more aggressive. Um, and that's going to do it, except for the star. So the star is going to tick up the track here, because that was the very first uh, red-sided, or uh, scheme two side, I should say, of the Automa card. But there's no enlist bonus for us, too bad. So now we're gonna head over to the White Faction and see what they're doing. There's not many times when playing a solo game that I'm as scared as pulling the White Faction's card as I am right now. With the way the board is laid out and how dangerously close the White Faction is to messing up a ton of workers and resources up there, I really don't want that to happen. Don't have much control over it, mind you, but I'm really kind of worried. So we're gonna jump right into pulling the White Faction's card here for the Automa to see what happens. Okay, so the very first thing is going to be an encounter and a factory action for our character. But this, this faction's character is dead because I killed him. And because uh, they haven't actually spawned uh, this character back in the game yet, they can't do that action. I'll talk more about that in a second. So this is probably the best card I could have ever gotten. The next one here is movement of the character. We can't do that either because the character does not exist on the game board. It's currently on the map. So none of the top actions will be done. Going to the secondary column, or row I should say, where we gain stuff for the Automa, that is not the white faction symbol, so they will not be gaining a mech. Now you'll notice there's a little character symbol right there. 
if that symbol had been the white faction symbol, this is when it would have spawned the character back into the home base. So because our character is still in the faction mat, and also because the fact that this is not the uh, symbol for the white faction, all of this is ignored, but the only thing that will they will get is a worker and two coins. But you'll see here they've run out of workers to place, so they won't get one. They only get two coins. This is literally one of the best cards I could have gotten in this situation because it keeps the character off the board, which is exactly what we want because I want to be able to deal with that silly mech that's just hanging around outside of my workers area near the farmlands or the village. So... Basically, that's it. That's all they got for this particular draw. And uh, we're going to go right back over to my turn. So moving on to my turn, it's a little bit crunched in terms of what I can actually do. Really, the only things I can do is bolster. I don't have the payment to get the mech out that I want here for steel. Uh, I could do a trade action, gain two resources, but then I'm one shy of having a log to build a building because I currently only have three wood. Uh, and with this, the sad thing is I need to spend a power, a popularity, and a coin. I don't have any more power left because I was silly and spent all of my power. I should have totally left one. That was a big mistake on my part, something I very much regret right now because I could have done a, uh, if I had had that extra power, I could have gone ahead, produced, and then enlisted at the same time, which would have been a nice combo action. So that was a big mistake on my part. Uh, but I can't do anything about it now because that's the way it played. Um, and uh, we're going to go ahead now, I think. And I'm probably going to bolster. I want to bolster mainly because I think I've got issues coming towards me real soon. Plus, it'll give me the ability to, to go ahead and do that produce action next. So I'm going ahead and bolstering. I have to pay a coin to do it. So I'm taking a coin, paying for it. Uh, I don't have the steel to do this, so that is the end of my turn, short and sweet. Now we're going to move on to the yellow faction. So here we go with the yellow faction, hoping that it's not terrible. We're on the red side, and hey, that's easy. It's a movement of one of their uh, workers, so we'll go ahead and do that now. So let's see if we can get this pinned down correctly. So where will the worker be going? Well, there's a number of options here. We'll take a look at what is a valid hex. So with a uh, move worker action, we're looking for anything in the neighborhood of any Automa unit. So there's a lot of units out here um, in the neighborhood of the Automa's base. Uh, no enemy unit and uh, no Automa worker. So the closest to the Automa's base, that'll be the one that's already in there. So there we go. It'll be this guy right here. We're going to pick this guy up and we're going to choose the destination hex. That's be a valid hex in the neighborhood of the most Automa units. In the neighborhood of the most Automa units, eh? Okay, so then let's take a look at this stuff. So we've got two here going for this one because the base doesn't count. Uh, so two here. Um, coming around to this side, we've got one here, two here, three here. This looks like the winning one. Two here and everything else. So it looks like it's going to be here on the lake. So it's going to go just like that. So that worker is going to plop down right there. Um, the other thing too is technically it could be here as well, I guess. Hmm... Is it going to be, yeah, actually, you know what? That might be the spot because this is a three and this is a three because technically there's one, two, three. So this could be a valid spot as well. Um, and let me just see here. It has to be uh, not in the not in the neighborhood of enemy combat units. Oh, so then I can't put it here because I have a combat unit here. So it won't go here. It will go here. There we go. Done. And uh, that's going to end the move worker part of that. The next thing is they're going to bolster two. So that puts them, oh my goodness, one away from gaining a star. Another, another star for them. They're going to gain a worker, which will be their last worker, which will show up right here on their base. And look at that. We get an enlist bonus. So we actually get to go up in popularity again, which is good. That's going to be it for them. They're going to up their star tracker to the next level, and we're going to be moving on to the white faction. Here we are with the white faction. I'm ready to see what happens. Oh my goodness, that top row looks scary. Wow. Okay, so first off, that is not the white faction symbol, so this section will be ignored. The next one is the encounter and factory action again, but again, the character is not on the board yet. It's not on the home base, so they're not going to be able to do that. And they can't move the character because the character's dead. So killing the character was a really smart decision on my part. Uh, they are going to gain a combat card, which is kind of a pain for us. Um, and they're going to gain two coins. So they are going to get prepared for what will likely be... Oh, shoot, I shouldn't have looked at that. So I'm going to pick a different one. That was my mistake. If 
flip that over. So here's another one for them. I shouldn't have known that. Uh, that's too bad because it was a two. That would have been a nice one to leave with them. Uh, they're going to gain two more coins. So I'll grab two coins. We'll drop them there and there. So they're going up in the coins department. Uh, enlisting bonus is a coin, but I only have the... Um, uh, I only have the popularity boost one for the list, so I don't get that, and the star. So the star is going to bump the white faction up to here. Okay, now this is a perfect time to stop. You know why? Because there's so much going on now, this board is crazy. Now what I'm really, really set up to do in the next turn for myself, and I'll let you guys know what I'm thinking, is to absolutely go for this produce action. Now this is where it gets scary. The white faction is a little bit capped at the moment because they don't have their uh, commander in chief they don't have their character on the board so it's slowing them down so i think i might have the time to produce in order to get uh, some more steel here as well as get um six more food here which would be nine which would be enough to basically enlist like a crazy person in the future uh, which would help me get uh, earn towards a star which would also with the two steel i get here help me get a mech um, all that kind of stuff. It really opens up a lot of options. Um, and then, of course, I also have the ability to potentially move, which I could even do on the next turn. I could move and be on the offensive and try to take their mech out to just get rid of it uh, so it's not there. So that's where I need some help from you guys. What do you think I should do next? I currently, last time, used the bolster action. I could move. I could go ahead with my three power, my two pathetic two power cards. And I could try to maybe move, uh, I could move my character and I could move my mech inside of here. And then I could have, could use three power plus two power cards at four would be seven I'd be going in with. And hope to beat the mech. It's a little dicey because it's not exactly the strongest number going in. Um, and the white faction definitely has a lot of combat cards. So I probably would lose that fight is my guess. So the other options to produce... Um, and to produce, I would be able to get all those things I was telling you about, the steel, the food. I'd also be able to enlist at the same time. That would be huge. Uh, gain some coins. The trade action is not useful for me yet because I still don't have four to use for a build action. So just trading a coin to get two resources is kind of not really the greatest. Unless I, I can get that benefit of going after the two resources to get the next mech just by doing a produce. So really it comes down to, do I produce or do I move an attack. So it's move an attack and no upgrade, or do I produce and enlist? It's 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 tough, it's a tough choice. And based on the game board, that's a decision I'm gonna leave up to you guys. So let me know in the comments below what you think I should do next. Thank you so much for watching. Hope it was useful and hope you're enjoying this playthrough. I'm having a blast with this. It's getting absolutely insane. I'm sure the next episode will be even more exciting. Thanks again, and as always, keep on rolling solo.